It's Local Edition. Brad Pomerantz in our Sacramento Bureau today, joined by Juan Garcia. He is the Deputy Director of the California Hispanic Chambers of Commerce. Tell us about the organization. Thank you, Brad. Of course. Uh, the California Hispanic Chambers of Commerce is the umbrella organization in California for the local and regional Hispanic Chambers of Commerce, again, throughout the state. Right. And we are about 45 plus Chambers of Commerce and business associations that will represent the interest of over 800,000. Uh, businesses. I, I must ask, this is California. Latinos are interwoven into every fabric of our great state. Yes. And so... With the majority. Uh, yes, yeah, you are. Pl plurality, at least. Yes. No doubt about it. I remember it was 2013 when, yes. when uh, Latinos outpaced Anglos. So that begs the question. I mean, are the issues starting to not enter? They're coming together, you know, between all Californians. Uh, you know, there, I, how I see it and, uh, is that there are issues that are, are issues regardless of whether you're Latino, right. Asian, Anglo, yeah. or of African American. Uh, the approach in which you try to find solu solutions, it's what makes every issue different, if, I, if, you, if you know what I'm talking about. I do. You, uh, in a sense that, you know, when it comes to uh, building a consensus that really uh, seeks to represent the interests of our community um, and not only brings that perspective but also plays into the role in how it impacts nice. communities across the across the board I think that that's what we see now uh, you know in a few towns uh, a few blocks down from the studio you have the capital and we still have a good representation of so Latinos but it's still not quite representative to our numbers. And let's talk about Latino electoral politics. Sure. There's no doubt that Latinos are not uh, representing at the same level as population numbers mm -hmm. in California. That being said, for the first time, I believe in modern history, we have a Speaker of the Assembly who is of Latino descent, Anthony Rendon, or Rendon. Yes. We have a leader of the Senate, Kevin DeLeon. Went of, to the same high school, by the way. You went to high school with Kevin? No, we went to the same, same high school. Same high school, but that's fantastic. <laughs> and so while they represent all Californians, of course, uh, there must be a, a certain sense of pride yes. in, in their ascension. Uh, talk, talk us through that. Uh, well, there is that sense of, 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 uh, of pride. Uh, but I still think that there's a lot of, and, and this happens, you know, outside and inside of the Capitol. Um, I, I even see it in, in, in my chambers right. across the state, is that there is the need to ensure that there's even more, right. that there's even more. And how can we pull each other up? Well, let's how talk we... about that, because presumably the way we would see greater representation of Latinos in elective office, mm -hmm. presumably, mm -hmm. is if more Latinos voted. And we are in arguably a post-racial era. I mean, I live in an area where all my representatives are African-American, mm -hmm. you know, and that's terrific. You know, it just happens to be that mm -hmm. way. And so clearly people of different ethnicities will vote for others of other ethnicities. Yeah. But I think you know where I'm going. So we've seen Latino voting patterns they're getting better. They're uptaking every cycle. Mm -hmm. But in 2012, we still saw Latinos voting under Anglo counterparts, Asian American counterparts. What do you think about, for example, in 2016? You know, I wouldn't be surprised if this year would definitely see a turnaround on that. If we can definitely, I'm expecting a high volume of Latinos actually showing up to vote. I think that um, a lot of organizations and government agencies and private uh, uh, you know, right. uh, organizations as well are making the effort to ensure that not only our Latino uh, citizens get to register to vote, but actually show to vote and act and can get empowered and embrace the, the, the power of actually making a decision and taking part on our uh, decision-making process and our c their civic engagement. And let me ask you about that because, look, if we look at voter registration patterns, mm -hmm. there's no question in many states, including California, we are seeing increased voter registration by folks of color, including those that are Latino. Mm -hmm. Will they come out to vote? You know, one could argue that this presidential race 
is incentivizing Latinos to come out and vote uh, for a variety of factors. Some may mm -hmm. be in strong support of Mrs. Clinton. Mm -hmm. Some may be in strong opposition to Mr. Trump. In uh, this state, we have a Latino running for the U.S. Senate, Let uh, Loretta Sanchez. Yes. And so there are lots of arguable reasons for Latinos mm -hmm. to come out. Yes, and, and that's what we try to do at the state chamber, Hispanic chamber. Right. Uh, we want to make sure whether you're you know, going left or going right, we want to make sure that, again, you really understand the power of your vote. And especially on the Latino, on, on Latino millennials. Uh, Latino yes. millennials are key components across the board. And let um, me ask you about Latino millennials because the numbers that I'm seeing amongst all millennials is that Mrs. Clinton, despite her troubles when she was running against Mr. Sanders, mm -hmm. is cleaning up with millennials. I think she's at a two to one margin. Mm -hmm. And I believe amongst Latino millennials, the numbers look even stronger for Mrs. Clinton. What do you make of that? Um, you know, there's uh, Latino millennials in general are really driven by the message and the sense of purpose, sense of purpose, and they will definitely align and will vote for the, the that candidate that gives them that purpose, that candidate that understands the culture, understands the uh, the core values of the Latino community, right. and that really attracts them. Can I ask and, you this question? Sure. So the vice presidential nominee for Mrs. Clinton is Tim Kaine. Speaks Spanish. Right, and he speaks Spanish, but more than speaks Spanish, you know, he, he lived, I think it was in Honduras yes. for a year, and he seems to have a genuine interest, I, I don't know exactly, but he seems to truly care mm -hmm. about issues facing the Latino community. What's your sense of his selection in terms of the Latino electorate? Uh, you know what, I, it, it on turns to politics, right? Right. Uh, they will, uh, both parties recognize that Latino vote is extremely significant, and uh, I don't know if Republicans, but not right. too long ago, they had a report that says you need to appeal to the right. Latino community, so otherwise you cannot lose. Exactly. But with regard uh, to Tim Kaine, the fact that he is an Anglo mm -hmm. who speaks Spanish pretty darn well, yeah. spent time in Honduras, seems to care about issues facing Latinos. Is that dispositive, persuasive? Does it matter to Latinos? I think it does. I think it does because it's not only, and, and again, it goes into a lot of who we can relate to mm. or why would we both fought for that specific mm. person. Um, it is somebody who represents uh, a different approach that a, that other parties mm -hmm. giving us. Was there a disappointment that, for example, um, Julian Castro was not selected, there or Tom always Perez? Be a, there there always be a disappointment because, mm -hmm. you know, uh, why cannot we have a right. candidate who right. is a Latino? But uh, choose for the sake of having a Latino, then that's a whole different issue. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into the politics no, no, of no. whether I believe that was a right selection right. or not. I think that they, their message is really appealing to this demographic, to my community. And they're, 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 they're showing a different card that the other party right. is. So do you believe that this is the year when Latinos will vote in such significant numbers that they will have an impact yes. on the presidential race? Yes, completely. Where? Completely. Georgia, Arizona, <laughs> North Carolina? In those bottle states. Right. Uh, you know what? I think it will be across the board. Yes. I think it will be across the board. And, and again, it goes to whether they vote on the left or the vote on the right. right. I just want people to show up to the polls. I just really do. And again, it goes to making sure that we have an increased uh, number on civic engagement, that we make sure that not only we show up to vote, but we put people through the pipelines to ensure that this building gets populated right. and it truly right. represents uh, the, the, right. the, uh, the population across the state. His name is Juan Garcia. He's the Thank Deputy you. Director of the California Hispanic Chambers of Commerce. I'm Brad Pomerantz in Sacramento, Local Edition.